Thank you, Jesus. Uh, why don't we just lift up our voices and bless the name of the Lord? Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Let's bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's bless the Ancient of Days. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Almighty God. Worship Him. Thank Him for what He has done in the past. Thank Him for what He's about to do now. Give Him glory. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Father. Amen. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. Who never fails. Who never fails. Forevermore, hallelujah, I have a of days, the unchangeable changer, the God who answers prayers, the God who can never fail, the Lord of hosts, the Lord who has never lost a war, glory be to your holy name. Father, today 
in a very, very special way in the lives of all your children who are listening to us in all the viewing stations all over the world. Father, do something mighty. Do something miraculous. Do something unforgettable. And we will give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Well, I want you to shake hands with one or two people near you and say good evening, God bless you. Or whatever the time may be in your own nation. Glory be to God. And then you may please be seated. I want to salute all of you who are watching us by whatever means all over the world. I want you to know that today will be a brand new day for you. That the Almighty God will answer all your prayers. And you will not live here the way you came in Jesus' name. Today is day one of these special gatherings. And we'll be gathering again tomorrow and then on Wednesday. Today we want to begin a series on what happens when the wind of God blows. We will take our text from Matthew chapter 21 and we'll be reading verses 42 and 44. Matthew 21 Verses 42 and 44. As our opening text was this series of what we call special divine encounters. Matthew 21, 42. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the lost doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. God is going to do something marvelous in your eyes. And then verse 44, And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. What is the meaning of encounter? The word encounter has the same root as the word collision. A cat actually means head-on collision. For example, if a trailer is coming one way at high speed and one little car is coming the other way at high speed and they collide head-on, then we can say they had an encounter. Now you know very well that if there is such a head-on collision, at the end of the story, the trailer will still be there, but the little car will be what they call a write-off. I give you that particular illustration because I want you to know that when 
the divinely supernatural collides with the natural, the natural must vanish. Today, God is about to collide with your problems. And at the end of the collision, the problems will be no more. When the wind is blowing, if the wind blows hard enough, no matter how big a tree may be, the tree will be uprooted. The wind comes from God. The tree is natural. No matter how long it has been there, when the wind blows sufficiently strong, the tree will no longer be standing. And so tonight, every plant that God has not planted in your life will be uprooted. That's why you read in Mark chapter 11, from verse 22 to 23, Mark 11, 22 and 23, when the Bible says, Jesus told the disciples, have faith in God. And he says, if you have faith and you don't doubt, you will say to this mountain, mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and the mountain will obey. What he is saying is that if you have faith in God, if God is on your side, you will command a mountain, which is natural, in the name of the one who is supernatural, and at the end of the collision, the mountain will be no more. I want to prophesy to somebody that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, before you get back home today, all the mountains in your life will be gone. This will explain to you what happened in Exodus chapter 14. From verse 21 to 28, Exodus 14, 21 to 28. When the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, and the promised land is on the other side, but the Red Sea is blocking the way, the wind blew. The supernatural collided with the natural, because the rest is just a natural formation of water. When the wind blew, the rest sea gave way. As the Lord leaves, every red sea that has been blocking your way to your success shall give way tonight. You probably had wondered as to what happened in Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20 tells us about the wall of Jericho. Powerful, mighty wall. So tall. And yet so thick that according to historians, even if you pull it down, as soon as it landed, it will still be as tall as before. But then when men 
when children of Israel cried to God, when they shouted in the praise of God, when they summoned the one who made all things into action, as soon as the supernatural collided with the natural, the natural was broken to pieces. May, may I encourage you to shout a big hallelujah to the Almighty. Because, because you have shouted in faith, every wall of Jericho in your life will collapse right now. So let me hear another shout of hallelujah. When you get home, when you get home, I will want you to study Second Kings chapter seven, from verse one to the end. Second Kings chapter seven, from verse one to the end. So I'm encouraging those of you who are listening, who are passing by, and you are joining us, and you don't have a Bible, try and get one. And those of you who have Bibles and you have not been reading it, begin to read. Read Second Kings chapter 7, from verse 1 to the end. It will tell you the story of a time when things were hard. So hard that women were already eating their children. Because there wasn't enough food for my mom, the baby, to share. So Mama said, well, if I leave, I will have another child. Things were that bad. And then God spoke and said, things will change. <laughs> and for you who listen to me tonight, I decree things will change for the better for you. What caused the problem? Bible said there, there was a siege. Enemies surrounded the city. So nobody can come in, nobody can go out. That's what caused the problem. But the man of God said the siege is going to be lifted. <laughs> and the Bible tells us that the enemy who had come against the city had a sound coming from heaven. When they heard the sound coming from heaven, when they heard the sound of the army of God on the move, they fled. Today, in the name that's above every other name, your enemies will hear a sound from heaven. And they will leave you alone. And if you will agree with me, all the enemies of your nations, wherever you may be, will hear a sound from heaven. And they will leave your nations alone. <laughs> when we talk about the supernatural colliding with the natural, we can go further by telling you what happens when the one who is called the resurrection and the life, John chapter 11, Verse 25, 
John 11 verse 25 Jesus said I'm the resurrection and the life When the resurrection and the life collides with death Death must yield Why? Because death is natural It is natural That anyone who is born we die sooner or later. The moment you are born, you begin the journey again to the grave. That's why they don't ask you how young is your child. They say, how old? Because they know that's the natural way to go. But there is someone called the resurrection and the life. And his name is Jesus Christ. When Jesus collides with death, death must yield. For example, in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15, Luke 7, 11 to 15, where we have a real classical example of divine encounter a widow was going to bury her only son and there was a cloud with her as they were going to the burial ground and then from the opposite direction Jesus was coming and a cloud was coming with him somewhere on the way they met and there was a collision and Jesus Christ said to the widow weep not because there's going to be a collision now <laughs> Jesus touched the coffin and commanded death to lose the hold on that child. And the child got up. And the journey to the burial ground become a joyous journey back home. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything good in your life that had died shall come back to life today. Even when the dead have been dead and buried, as you will read in John chapter 11, verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, Lazarus had not just died, he had been buried for days. But when the resurrection and the life came to the graveyard, there was a collision. There was a collision between life and death. And death surrendered. Is it your womb that they say is already dead? Because of the divine encounter of tonight, that womb will come back to life. Is it your eyes? That have been declared dead. In the name that's above every other name. Because of the divine encounter of tonight, your eyes will come back to life. Is it your company that have been declared dead? Is it your marriage that have been declared dead? Is this your education that have been declared dead? Ah, whatever it is that is good in your life that have been declared dead in the mighty name of Jesus because of the encounter of today, they will come back to life.
And now I know you will say to me, Daddy, we know all that. We know that if the supernatural collides with the natural, uh, the natural must give way. And there are other supernaturals. I'm not, my problem is not ordinary. I'm not struggling with flesh and blood. I'm struggling with witches and wizards in my family. There are several evil forces working against me. They too are supernatural. Yeah, I agree. But I want you to know, power passes power. May I say it again? Power passes power. And when the superior supernatural collides with the inferior supernatural, the inferior supernatural must surrender. Ah. I will show you, it's in the Bible. Exodus chapter 7, from verse 10 to 12. Exodus 7, from verse 10 to 12. Oh, thank you, my father. You know, I mean to tell somebody who is listening to me right now. The witches in your family are in trouble from tonight. In Exodus chapter 7, from verse 10 to 12, Exodus 7, 10 to 12, there was a competition between one supernatural and the other. Moses threw down his rod before Pharaoh. The rod of Moses became a serpent. And the magicians of Pharaoh said, that's a joke. We too can do the same thing. And they all threw down their own rods too. And their rods also became serpents. Now listen to me carefully, my beloved children. Because of some fake prophets who have been performing magic, not miracles, some people are beginning to say that there's, there's nothing called miracles. Or that all of us who are servants of the living God, that we are all pretenders, that we are all arranging fake miracles. Let me tell you one thing loud and clear. The mere fact that you say there are fake miracles means there are miracles. <laughs> there is no counterfeit unless there is the original. You can never find a counterfeit 2,000 Naira note because there's no original. And I'm telling you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, very soon you will experience a real miracle. And so what happened? The magicians threw down their rods. Their rods became serpents. And, <laughs> and the rod of Moses said, very good. I will eat you up. And the rod of Moses that became a serpent swallowed all the serpents of the magicians and then it became a rod again. Today, in the name of the one who sent me to you, every evil force in your family shall be swallowed up by God. I know there are some of you who will say, yes, thank you, sir. I didn't, I didn't realize that before. But that... Uh, my problem is not that they are attacking me. My problem is even already inside. 
I can feel something moving in my body. I can feel something moving in my head. Etc. Etc. Et uh, that's fine. I want you to read Mark chapter five and read from verse two there to verse twenty. Mark five two to twenty. It will tell you of a man who had a legion of demons. If we are to believe Bible scholars, a legion means 6,000 demons in one man. You don't have 6,000 demons in you. Otherwise, we won't be standing here. That man had 6,000 demons in him. He himself knew he shouldn't be living among human beings. That's why he was living in the graveyard. But the moment he saw Jesus coming, when he saw power, when he saw the real power coming, when he saw the commander-in-chief of the host of heaven, when he saw the one who is called the king of glory coming, what did he do? He fell at his feet. He worshipped him. Power passes power. And today, every evil force dwelling in you, I command every one of them, get out now. Because it is written. <laughs> and the name of Jesus. Every name must bow. Any, any evil force, whether without or within, trying to stop you from reaching your goal in the name that's above every other name, tonight, they will come to an end. I will give you just one more example. And then I give you an opportunity to pray. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, from verse 6 to 12. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, from verse 6 to 12. The Bible told us that Paul was preaching the gospel to a governor. And there was a sorcerer. That was trying to disturb. The sorcerer was an agent of the devil. He also had a kind of supernatural power. But the Bible says, when Paul got angry, and he was full of the Holy Spirit, when the divinely supernatural rose up within him, he told the sorcerer, I command you be blind for a season. Suddenly darkness enveloped him, and he had to get out quickly. Every demonic force that has been hindering the work of God in your life, today they shall be blind. A divine encounter is a collision between the divinely supernatural and every other obstacle. And that is why God has arranged for these three days meeting. I can assure you in the name that's above every other name, even in your sleep tonight, you will see a difference. Let me close by telling you a statement that Jesus Christ made. He said, if you are not for me, you are against me. There is no way you can be neutral in this world. No way. It's either you have God on your side 
Or you have God against you. The almighty God has arranged for this particular kind of meeting to give you an opportunity to come over to his side. Because this year in particular the wind is already blowing. And when the wind is blowing, the enemies of God will get into trouble. And the friends of God, ha, huh, Red Sea will open unto them. There's about to be a great divine encounter. Are you on the side of God? Or are you against Him? If you are still living in sin, you're against God. But if you come to Him now, He will have mercy on you. He will save your soul. He will receive you into his family. And then you can say, Aha, let the wind blow. So I'm calling on you now. Wherever you are, listen to me. And you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus and you want to do so. Please run to the altar. Very, very quickly. I'm going to count from one to seven. Before I say seven, make sure you are already standing before the altar. So that together we can cry to the Almighty God to save your soul. And bring you to the side of the living God. I'm counting now. One. It is God that is calling you, not me. He's saying, come, come to my side, because the wind is blowing. Two. Three. Oh yes, you need Jesus in your life. You need to surrender your life to him completely. So that when the wind blows, it will be blowing in your favor. Four. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I can't see all of you, but you can see me. Go to the altar right now to surrender your life to Jesus. Did I say five? Then hurry up because now it is six. Those of you already in front of the altar and those of you on the way, cry to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. I want to be on your side. When the wind blows, I want the wind to blow in my favor. Please save my soul. I want to become a child of the living God. Let your blood wash, wipe away all my sins. Cry unto him. Tell him I will serve you. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to all the people who have come forward and pray that the Almighty God who saved our own souls will save their souls also. Let's pray for them. Let's intercede for them for about two minutes. And say, Lord, please have mercy. Have mercy on these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. And if you are on your way, then you have to hurry up because I want to pray now for salvation. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word tonight. I want to thank you for the wind that is already blowing. And I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wipe away their sins. Please save their souls and receive them into the family of God. And from now on, my Father and my God, when the wind blows, let it blow in their favor. And when they cry unto you for anything, please answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I rejoice with those of you who have surrendered your life to Jesus all over. I want to rejoice with you because from now on, I will be praying for you. There are people near you who will get the information I need. Your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And they will send this information to me. And I promise you, from now on, I'll be praying for you. Congratulations. So, if, if you will just turn to your left, you will see somebody there who will lead you to where some people are waiting to collect the information I need and then bring everything back to us. Thank you very much. Yes, let the rest of us Give the Lord a big round of applause. Thank you, Father. Now we are going to pray. But before we do so, the word of God says we should not come before God empty-handed. So, the ushers, wherever you are, will put baskets near you, want you to take an offering, go and drop it in the basket to let the Almighty God know, I have not come empty-handed. And I can assure you, you will not go home empty-handed. So we will do that, and then I will pray the closing prayer for you. Uh, so quickly, take your offering, dance to the nearest basket with joy, because tonight the wind is already blowing in your favor. Over to you, musician.
Before I pray for you, I want to give you two minutes to ask God for something special. Ask God for a miracle tonight. Ask God for something that you want to testify about, even by tomorrow. Say, Lord God Almighty, tonight, let this particular problem in my life have an encounter, a head-on collision with you. This very night, Lord, perform a special miracle in my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Almighty God, the resurrection and the life, the extremely powerful God, the Most High. I bless your holy name tonight for your word. Thank you because... There's about to be a mighty collision between you and our problems. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And commit all your children listening to us all over the world into your hands. This very moment, Father, could lie with their problems. Destroy their problems. Collide with every mountain in their lives. Let the mountains move in Jesus' name. Solve their problems tonight. Even in their sleep tonight, Father, visit them. And let their victory be total. Thank you, my Father. Father, bless the offering of your children. Sanctify it. And use it for your glory. And Father, collide with poverty in their lives. And by tomorrow, Lord God Almighty, let everyone have a testimony. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I want you to shout another hallelujah.